there were some things that I forgot to mention in the previous video, and uh, it turned out to be a pretty disorganized video, so uh, that video as well as this one may be, may be revised at some point in the future uh, when I get around to it to make it more organized, but for the time being I just want to address a few things individually. First of all, the square root function works in octave and freemat, uh, just SQRT, and the cube root function works uh, oh, I guess not in Prima. It does in Octave, but at any rate, uh, for other roots, you could just do rational powers, like 5 to the 1 -third, and then we could take that answer and cube it, and uh, just for fun, let's see what, because we're doing finite arithmetic, um, the cube root of 5, um, cubed is not exactly 5 because it's finite arithmetic. Uh, that's something that you, if you do any um, any uh, numerical analysis um, you'll learn more about that. Uh, also another thing worth mentioning is that freemat and um, octave do not do implicit multiplication. Uh, just like maxima, if you have 4 and then parentheses 6 or this might do something weird, I don't know what that will be. Okay, so what you want to do is 4, oops, not the end, times 6, like that, and that will give you 24. So that's just something that's worth mentioning. Uh, now the second thing that I want to talk about is that there's a, another kind of function that uh, I need to address, and that's the kind of function that results in more than one kind of output. Like let's say a equals uh, 10 times a random let's say 5 by 5 5 by 5 matrix. And I said 10 times just because that gives us numbers between um, 0 and 10 instead of just 0 and 1. So um, we, if we want to do LU factorization of A and we do just LU A, well that only gives us L. But if we want to actually get all three parts, the lower part, upper part, and the permutation matrix, then we'll have to do L, U, P. So basically we're, we're defining L, U, and P. So some, um, some functions will actually give you three different outputs. And to, if you have, basically you have to know what function you're using. So if you're, um, let's see if I could just basically pull it up on um, MATLAB's website. Uh, LU decomposition. So, whenever you go to their website, MathWorks's website, to look at the code, they'll say, "Oh, there's actually a Q. I don't know what that Q is, but well, you could figure it out, I guess." Um, LUP, so lower matrix, upper matrix, and then the uh, uh, permutation matrix. So you have to basically know what function you're you're working with. And some of the functions you make can also have that. So to do the LUD comp of A, here's L, here's U, and here's the permutation matrix. Um, and also, similarly, if you have QR factorization, so I have QR equals uh, QR of A, and that gives gives me QR. And just to prove that Q really is um, unitary. If you do Q times the adjoint of Q, you get the uh, identity matrix back. Uh, also, a similar similar concept would be psi. So if I had, uh, let's do uh, capital T, I just, I uh, don't no, capital B, just to be a little more consistent, equals random um, 4 by 7 matrix. So, um, if I wanted to do rows and columns equals size of B, that means R is now 4 and C is now, so it's lowercase r, as opposed to the uh, QR we have up here, but that uh, uh, should be clear. So we have RC equals size, that'll be important for some algorithms, you'll want to be able to define the size of certain, mat of certain input matrices. And also, you can return only parts of a matrix if you want to. So let's look again at A. So let's say um, we want to find only the third row 
fourth column. You can do third row, fourth column. You could basically use a as a function. So you could say this is like this is going to give you the third row, fourth column. Uh, if we want to do, um, say we have two through five of column four, well that will give us column four, two through five. Or if we want to do third row, third row, three through five, two, uh, three, four, five we do 3 comma 3 through 5 or if we want to do an entire column this will return all rows in column 4 so just to compare because we can't see the previous one anymore so we have all rows of column 4 so this will give me the column vector of, of 4 and that also means that if I wanted to do some kind of a uh, um, linear combination say of I could do 2 times a minus 5 times a uh, 5. So that gave me a linear combination 2 times the second column of a minus 5 times the fifth column of a. Um, so that's, that's going to be pretty important for a lot of things later on. Um, it's here's something that you'll need to be using for numerical analysis for linear algebra. So I'll say id equals i of 5. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the output because it's not very important. Um, now id, uh, the, the entire column of row 1. I mean, sorry, the in <laughs> uh, column 1, all rows. So this just means the first column. That's something that you would actually use in a numerical analysis for linear algebra occasionally. Okay, that's all I wanted to do for this video. I just wanted to uh, get those things out of the way. Um, I know that's pretty fast, but um, hopefully you'll see by example, because that's probably the easiest way to do this particular kind of program, just by example. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.